Welcome back to the Home Lab and thanks very much for joining me again. What we're going to look at today is a really retro kind of seven segment display. We're going to look at the RCA Numatron. So I'm sure you're all familiar with seven segment displays, the kind of LED ones that you see. Um, I've got a couple here, a small one, a large one on my switch bounce counter, um, which I need to do a video on at some stage. And you might have seen the video on my um, large one that I've built here with LEDs behind. Um, you might also be familiar with Nixie tubes and there's been a real resurgence in interest in those. Uh, and again, I made a little video on my uh, Nixie tube matrix display here. But the other day I was thinking um, I'd like a new sort of uh, title sequence for my FJ's physics videos. And I thought I know exactly the thing for that. Let's see if I can use another retro display from the 1970s, the RCA Neutron, which works in a radically different way, even though it displays a similar style to the LED seven segment display. So the RCA Numatron is an interesting little device and it was invented or at least uh, built by RCA in the 1970s. And you might think that that's a long time ago, but I'm uh, truly amazed that it was actually that recent. You'd think um, these devices using their tiny little light bulb filaments would have been invented um, maybe in the 1920s or 1930s. But they have some huge advantages over other display types. Uh, in comparison to um, the Nixie tube, um, these only need about 5 volts to light up. The Nixie tube needs, well, around 200 or just under 200 um, to strike. Um, the other thing with the Nixie tubes is if the voltage drops below a certain level, they just go out. Um, whereas Numatrons, because they use little filaments, if the voltage drops a bit, I'll try and demonstrate that now with mine, um, they just get dimmer. And I'll turn them back up again and they get brighter. So there we go. Uh, that's about five volts. Um, each segment here takes about uh, 25 milliamps. So my display here at five volts is really only drawing about an amp, so that's not very much current. Because they work on a very, very low voltage, they can actually be directly connected to the control electronics that's um, switching them on and off, which is really useful. They don't need an extra driver circuit and a high voltage power supply um, that I had to build for my little um, Nixie display. They also have another advantage that if there's a voltage spike, it has to be quite short, and I'm not going to demonstrate it, um, they might um, get slightly brighter, but of course they take a while to get up to temperature, and by then, the voltage might have dropped. Uh, in the case of um, LED displays and LED seven segment displays, I've done it so many times, uh, the voltage gets too high, too much current, and they burn out immediately. The other thing with these is because they're a sort of light bulb, um, they run warm, but these are not too hot to touch. Uh, mine are running at, I guess, about 1000 degrees C. So you get a broad spectrum of light from them. And that broad spectrum of light can be uh, filtered. So if you put, I'm not going to here, but you can put filters in front of them and change the color that you see. Um, they're also viewable through a very, very large angle, which is really useful. And I remember seeing these as a, uh, when I say a child, I think I remember them even as a teenager when I was learning to drive. So many of the petrol pumps in the UK used uh, Numatron displays. And if you think about it, um, has lots of advantages, but one of them is when you're filling the car up, you're not looking directly at the display. I absolutely hate some of the modern petrol pumps because if you're around the corner um, trying to look at it, you just can't read what's on it. Whereas with this display, um, it's really very clear indeed. So it's really um, an excellent device. They didn't last very long, um, but I thought I'd get some and uh, show you how they work and I built this little display uh, for the beginning of my FJ's physics videos. 
Before we get into the details of how I built my display, uh, you might think, isn't this going to be a bit like a Bletchley Park computer that these things are going to burn out all of the time and you're going to need a tray of them and keep replacing them? But in fact, um, if you run them at a fairly low voltage, um, the filaments run much, much cooler than a normal light bulb and the data sheet has a life expectancy of about 100,000 hours. Um, so they should last for at least as long as the device they're fitted in. There's another advantage of these that I've not heard anyone else mention. It's not even on the data sheet, I don't think. And that's that they will work with AC or DC. They're just filaments, so it doesn't even matter which way round you actually wire them. As long as you have a common cathode or a common anode um, to each one, then it doesn't matter if you pass the current one way or the other way through the filament. So if you've got a DC power supply, that's fine. If you've got an AC one, and I think the petrol pumps might have been, I think you could just about see them flicker. But of course, if they're flickering a bit, as long as it's not too annoying, um, the filament um, is sort of being switched on and off and maybe um, that will help it last just a little bit longer. So let's have a, a look inside one of these and uh, you'll see more of the detail of how the filaments were arranged so they can produce letters and numbers like my display here. Looking inside the tube, you'll see a series of pins that face out towards you. And between those pins, you'll see a very thin filament wired across them. Now that filament is not coiled up like in a light bulb. It's a fine, thin, straight line um, to give a really crisp display. There weren't many tubes in this range, but there is one that has the plus sign in it. And I'm using it here. I'm just using the, is that the G segment? Um, the horizontal segment to do the hyphen in FJ's physics. And here I'm doing the apostrophe, but that's a normal seven segment display. And I'm just using this segment, I think the B segment. So what we'll do now is we'll look at what I did to make this little display for my FJ's physics titles. So the making of my uh, little display here. Well, the first thing I had to do was track down some of these pneumatron tubes. And um, I actually found someone online selling 13 of them. And there was a bit of a mixture, but most of them were these um, seven segment display ones. And there was a few with pluses in them. And I think there's one or two tubes that have the seven segment display and a tiny little cross, which if you light up the cross down at the bottom, produces a decimal point, which I haven't used. So um, I uh, bought those and it, this is a real throwback. This won't mean much to uh, young people, uh, but to people of my age, it'll make perfect sense because they arrived in a tobacco tin. And um, if you've looked at some of my other videos, um, one or two of you might have wondered why um, there's tobacco on my desk because I'm not a smoker. Um, and this is how everyone, you know, your granddad and people like that used to keep all their little parts and little tools and things like that. Um, whole arrays of tobacco tins. I remember my uncle taking the tobacco tin lid and screwing it to part of the workbench and then he could just take the bottom off and take out what he needed and then click it back on again. The same with um, jam jars and things like that. Well, I'm not encouraging smoking, but I really miss these tins. Uh, my dad's um, smoked a pipe and we had them all over the house and used to put all sorts of things in them, screws and bits and pieces like that. Um, anyway, I'm waffling, but uh, for me, it was really fun to see a tin come with one twist. Uh, the tin has a couple of holes in the back that are uh, scored and beautifully marked. And um, I wonder if this tin served another purpose before it was used um, to store the little pneumatron tubes. So a quick look here at how I wired these up. So the first thing I did was worked out how many tubes I needed and it was 11 tubes. So I sort of drew out um, the letters that I needed and worked out where I needed spaces and slightly different characters like the hyphen here and the apostrophe. Now, if you look at the base of a pneumatron, they're really easy. Um, they have uh, pin one, which doesn't connect to anything. Uh, pin two, which is the common, so in my case, common cathode, I made that negative on every single tube. And then if you want to wire up the segments, uh, you just need to know uh, which pin goes to which segment. And it's not as quite as obvious as you think. So as you go round, pin seven is A, pin eight is B, and then pin nine is F uh, for some reason or other. So here's my uh, seven segment layout. And most of you will know that the top's called A, B, C, D, etc. Me being me, I call that one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. 
and then use the uh, resistor color code. So brown for one, red for two, etc. So I could remember that I've wired up to uh, segment one, segment two, segment three, etc. And just spent quite a few evenings working my way along the tubes to get them all wired up. The exception, of course, was the uh, Numatron tube, a slightly different type of uh, tube that has the plus symbol inside it. And I just worked out which pin I needed to, I think the data sheet, the original data sheet is actually wrong on this. I think it gets the wrong type of tube um, next to the code number for the tube, but it didn't matter. I worked it out in the end that I just needed the horizontal bar um, to get the hyphen on FJ's physics. And in fact, I think um, I'm quite pleased with the result. So once I'd worked out which pins were which on the little Numatron tubes, I got myself a little circuit board. That's the one with um, no joins on it at all, but just little pads that you can solder onto. And they're little blighters to get in place because um, the wires on them are so close together. And the ones that I got um, were sort of circuit board mounting ones. And I think they've been cut off a board. So they probably had much longer wires on them originally. Uh, finding sockets for these is nigh on impossible so it was a case of sort of bend the legs into position and push them in solder them onto the board and then my usual sort of thing um, I colour coded each segment so I knew which wire was going to which segment and then worked my way along each letter uh, wiring up each segment that I needed to do the F, the hyphen, the J etc um, and I did it I think I'm looking at mine now in three boards um, it was just easier to work like that and then soldered the three together. Uh, so it was then a case of trying to work out um, how to display the thing. So that's what I'll talk about next. Now you might know that I'm a real fan of these um, circuit board holders and I use them a lot when I'm actually building circuits. They're really not expensive. They're about £10 uh, online. And I was thinking, how could I mount this? Now, I've noticed that everyone does these steampunk things with uh, mahogany bases and bits of brass and all sorts of things. And I, j I just couldn't in my head see um, a way to go. I thought the base was going to become uh, more visible um, than the actual little Numatron tubes. And then it was staring me in the face. Why don't I take one of these um, circuit board holders that I've used for displaying some of my other things, like my uh, supercomputer that I built, and um, just cut it up a little bit, um, move the holders on it, move them down a bit. And it actually, I think, makes for a really nice stand for this. So the next problem was, how was I going to go about powering it? Well, to be honest with you, I haven't come up with a really good solution for powering this. Um, my first thoughts were to use these 18650 um, 3.7 volt batteries and just put a battery holder underneath and you get oh, about 20 minutes and then the brightness goes down. So I'd have to be constantly recharging these. Um, I know that some people use um, USB uh, ports and they can uh, power them up, it's about an amp. Um, I can use one of these little voltage regulators, put that underneath and maybe connect it to another power supply so I can control the voltage to them so it doesn't go over voltage for any length of time and uh, damage the filaments haven't really come up with a good solution yet. I've got it on the bench power supply at the moment. Um, it's worth saying that I find this a confounded nuisance. Every time I build electronic projects like this, any of them that won't run on a PP3 battery for any great length of time, and even that is just such a nuisance. You build this lovely thing and then you can't move it around the house because you need a power supply to go with it. But this is gonna probably stay here on my bench, so I'll either power it off a USB port or um, just use the bench power supply. Um, I'm quite happy with that, um, but I would like to come up with a better solution if I can. Right, the bit underneath that you wanted to see, and I didn't want to show you because what a mess it is, but you can see here uh, the common uh, cathode line that I've got all the way along the bottom, so I can connect directly to all the pins that I've got as uh, minus or zero volts. And then coming down um, different, uh, coloured wires going from the positive rail along the top here going to the different segments and if you remember I've numbered them so each coloured wire lets me know which segment I'm wiring up and in fact even though it looks like a bit of a mess it works reasonably well. Every physics. 
Well, I do hope you enjoyed my video there on the RCA DR2100 series Pneumatrons and you um, like my little display that I made. I, granted, it's not connected to computers, Arduinos and things like that. That's not my style. I just kind of wire it up and I want the thing to work straight away. So it's not being driven by any kind of computer code. If you've got any interesting stories about Pneumatrons or you remember seeing them when you were younger, do say something in the comments. I'm always interested to hear about uh, what you've got to say. Anyway, I'll be making another video before long and I look forward to having you join me then. Thank you.